Let's talk about the top five myths of GLP-1 medicines. First and foremost, let's talk about the thyroid cancer black box warning on the label of all GLP-1 medicine. Whenever I talk about GLP-1 medicines, people are like, there's literally a black box warning on the box of the medicine and in the package insert. Why are you saying it doesn't cause cancer? Here's what the black box warning says. Warning, risk of thyroid C-cell tumors. Depending on if you have trisepatide or semaglutide, it says, in rats, trisepatide or semaglutide causes thyroid C-cell tumors. It's unknown whether Zepbound or Wegovi causes thyroid C-cell tumors including medullary thyroid cancer in humans as the human relevance of terzepatide or semaglutide induced rodent thyroid C-cell tumors has not been determined. So here's the deal. While it says big warning about thyroid C-cell tumors, the issue is, is that rodents actually have GLP-1 receptors on the specific types of cells that cause the specific type of thyroid cancer called medullary thyroid cancer. It's the C-cells. So when they give this medicine to rats, they see a proliferation of the C-cell tumors. However, it's not been shown in humans. And in fact, humans don't have or readily have those GLP-1 receptors on their C cells. There are a lot of researchers and scientists who think we should be taking that black box warning off because it only scares people. In the meantime, if somebody has a history or a family history of medullary thyroid cancer, we don't use the medicine just in case. There's also another syndrome called multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2 syndrome that also arises medullary thyroid cancer where we do not prescribe this medicine. In the rare event that someone has a family history of medullary thyroid cancer, there is genetic testing that you can actually do to determine if it would be safe in this individual. Do note there are other types of thyroid cancers called papillary and follicular, and those are not a contraindication or a reason you can't take the medicine. The second most common myth that I hear is that the medicines cause pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer. These drugs have been out for two decades, and there have been meta-analyses of all the data that they've had with these drugs, the various types of GLP-1 medicines. They've put these things together, and they don't see a difference in pancreatitis in the active arm, with whether it's terzepatide or semaglutide or the older ones, versus a placebo, meaning there is no statistical difference between the placebo or the active drug. This was a worry before because GLP-1 actually works on the beta cells of the pancreas. So it's thought that maybe it could have proliferated and caused inflammation of the pancreas, but when it comes down to it, we don't see a difference uh, statistically between the active drug or the placebo in large meta-analyses of all these randomized trials. Now, having said that, I have seen pancreatitis before and it was caused by a gallstone. Gallstones can occur due to the weight loss and it's thought that maybe the GLP-1 medicine has an effect on how well the gallbladder works, which may precipitate stones. However, most people believe that it's likely the weight loss because a quick weight loss can increase your risk of developing gallstones. And if the gallstone gets in the wrong spot, near the pancreas, it can cause inflammation and a pancreatitis. Despite this, we still didn't see a difference between the placebo and the active arms, meaning terzepatide, semaglutide, or the other drugs. What about pancreatic cancer? Still no signal seen. The third most common myth I hear is all about muscle loss. Now, I am actively doing research in this arena. I have multiple podcasts where we go in-depth all about this, but the gist is these medicines don't seem to be any more catabolic, meaning muscle wasting or muscle deteriorating compared to any other way you develop a calorie deficit, meaning you're eating fewer calories than your burn. So things like bariatric surgery or diet without any type of exercise or intervention seems to be similar rates of muscle loss or lean mass loss or fat-free mass loss. In some of the studies looking at semaglutide, it did look like there was a signal for a slight bit more fat-free mass loss than what you would expect, whereas terzepatide didn't have that signal. But in these studies, it was a DEXA scan and you can actually not know if it's muscle or just fluid the way that the DEXA scan works. We are publishing data right now that show if you do the resistance training, strength training, and along with eating a sufficient amount of protein, the fat-free mass or lean soft tissue loss is minimal. So when it comes to muscle loss, I'm not concerned. The fourth top myth I see is stomach paralysis. Now, the technical term for this is called gastroparesis. GLP-1 actually has a physiological effect on slowing down your gastric emptying of your stomach. In the randomized trials and meta-analyses of these randomized trials, there have been shown zero cases of permanent 
gastroparesis. We do see a physiological effect of slowing of your gastric emptying that actually goes away over time as long as you're taking the medicine. When you take the medicine long term though, this effect starts to wane or decrease. That's why when you look at the package insert for Zepbound, they actually mention birth control decreases of absorption, likely having to do with this effect. But that goes away the longer you're on the medicine. So while there are case reports and talks of lawsuits talking about permanent gastroparesis, it's not been shown in the data. If it does happen, it has to be extremely rare. So I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but if the effect is there, it's very small. And the fifth top myth I see is that these medicines cause blindness. There was a study done last year looking back at patients who were taking semaglutide in those with type 2 diabetes that showed a little bit of a signal for non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, which can cause blindness. I had my retina buddy come on a podcast and discuss this and talk about all the risk factors for this. And there's some potential biological plausibility because if you're sleeping at night and the blood pressure starts going down and these medicines help decrease your blood pressure, it's possible there's not enough blood getting to your eye. However, in the newest analysis this year, it didn't seem to be a signal. So again, the signal was only seen in semaglutide in those with type 2 diabetes, and then the newest analysis didn't even show that there was a signal. I was going to go into other myths like saying these medicines are cheating and things like that, but I'm going to save that for another video. I'm Dr. Spencer Nadolsky, a triple board certified obesity specialist doctor who has seen thousands of patients on these medicines. If you want to learn more about the GLP-1 medicines and weight loss and obesity in general, make sure you subscribe to my channel and follow along for more.